Welcome to the Xerox Ultralink Fleet Orchestrator Part 2. This video is the second in a series about Fleet Orchestrator. If you haven't seen the first one about Fleet Orchestrator, you may want to look at that first. Or if you have started setting up a tree already, we can dive right in. Today I will cover how to use Fleet Orchestrator to create a clone file, why would you want to, and the different ways to use a clone file, both manually and automatically. We've already set up the first two devices in a tree. Now we're ready to set up a clone file to configure a number of the settings on both devices automatically. Let me remind you of how these devices in the tree are set up. This is Jamie's printer. Her printer is configured with one device, Ted's printer, directly connected to hers. This is a very small tree. We will add to it later. Now let's get back to cloning. This video is about four minutes long. I've set up most things ahead of time to make it quicker. So let's first make a clone file on the publisher at the root of the tree. Our publisher is Jamie's printer. Here is the web page. As an SA, you can save a clone file onto your computer and manually send it back to that device or other devices. Or you can share that clone file from a publisher out to a connected fleet. And of course, you can do both in one operation. First, let's see how you create a clone file from the selected settings that you want to download to your PC, Mac, or other computer. You get the cloning from the Fleet Orchestrator page. Click on Create Install File. Choose Create File. We're going to choose a clone file. I'll explain one touches later. You can see here that it is asking you for a name. Or choose a useful file name. I'm going to choose Cloning Administration and Connectivity 1031 2018. You'll notice here it says share this file and download this file. To download this file, that's going to let me download it to my Mac and save it so I can use it on this device later on or send it to a, another Ultralink. Share this file. We'll publish it from Jamie's printer because it's a publisher. Automatically make it available to all the other printers. Right now there's only one, Ted's printer. One of the powerful features of cloning is you can choose what you want to share and what you don't want to share. You can choose everything that's in here, which is basically everything in the device except for the unique settings like IP address, host name, device name, things like that. Or you can make your choices. I like to set up email, some security settings. I can hit click on details here and it'll show me what that encompasses. And some administration things, some connectivity settings as I mentioned. That's it. Pretty good. I'm going to click on create. The file is created and then both made ready for download to my computer right here. Click on this. And also it's now published. So now this is available for download to any of the children of this device. That is, subscribers that are directly connected to this one. Right now, that's Ted's printer. Now let's look again at the main Fleet Orchestrator page. Clicking on the Devices icon, you can see that Ted's printer, that's the one here in blue, is set up to retrieve that file daily, 9 a.m. If we wanted to change the frequency of when we retrieve the files, we can do that. So I have Ted's printer's highlighted. I click on Edit Selected. I can then change the frequency, the time, 10 o'clock. Click on Update. It's now going out to talk to Ted's printer and saying, change your time to 10 a.m. It said, okay. Since you might naturally wonder if the structure you just set up is actually going to work, we provide a way to test that and to generally navigate up and down the tree. By highlighting Ted's printer on the left, here in blue, you can now see the schedule and identification information on the right. You might want to see more information about Ted's printer. You can use the links on the right to open a new browser tab to Ted's printer. Once you're at the child, you can link back up to the publisher or parent that the subscriber is getting files from. In this very simple case, the publisher and parent is the same, Jamie's printer. So I'm looking at Ted's printer. I have a Ted's printer, same information that we just saw up at the publisher. The status is a bit more detailed here. And if I want to, I can link back up to Jamie's printer. Click on this. These links are really convenient. Just note a caution, remember where you were as you go up and down the tree. It's very easy to get confused. Right now I'm looking at Ted's printer's website. If I click on this, it brings me back up to Jamie's printer. Let's look again at Ted's printer. I'm here at Ted's printer and I have this new icon called Get Files Now. By choosing this, the device will immediately talk to its parent to see if there's any new files that it needs. In this case, the clone file will be downloaded and installed. This will trigger a reboot on Ted's printer, and then about three minutes later, you can see the results on the Fleet Orchestrator page. Okay, that should be good enough for today's session. When you're ready, stop back in to see the next installment of the Fleet Orchestrator and the other powerful features in the Xerox Ultralinks. Thanks for watching.